fading perspective expected, so accept it. Friendly fire, all ball TV. Gonna jump right into this. Cat Williams, Shannon Shaw, break the internet. Sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next. The one I was in, <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams, was gonna be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was gonna play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? My POV though. As soon as I saw this. I thought Shannon was crazy. He had Britney Renner on. He's doing the internet thing. Cat Williams has helped Shannon Sharp single-handedly end Stephen A. Smith's reign at ESPN. ESP, uh, ESPN is looking to a contract negotiation with Stephen A. Smith in 18 months. That's, been, that's what's been reported, right? Where Stephen A. Smith is looking to be the highest paid person at ESPN. Is it important to you, based on the way the first time ended at ESPN, that you are the highest paid person on ESPN, given the work that you're doing for them? Do you think that should be the case? Yes. I'm not stuttering. Hell yes. That's absolutely true. Now, I respect the fact if they feel differently, um, it's not going to be animosity. It's not going to be something where I'm looking at them and I feel like I got screwed. It's a business. Um, and I understand that and I'm a big boy, but I don't believe it's because of what transpired in 2009. That's what under the bridge, the same bosses that let me go. I'm friends with them now. They explained a lot. They highlighted for me what I did wrong, what role I played. My own mother looked me in the face and said, when are you going to look at yourself? It's real easy to point the finger at them, but you're trying to tell me you didn't deserve. You may not have deserved to be fired, but would you have wanted somebody like you working for you the way you may have acted towards your bosses at that time in 2009? You were a bit out of control. So my, my own mother told me that. So I don't blame ESPN for that. But here's the thing. I've changed. I've changed for the better. I grew up. And more importantly, I've mastered my own business. In the world of sports television, Clay Travis, I've been number one for 12 years. Come April 1st, we're more yep. 12 consecutive years. I've been number one. And not only have I been number one every year, I've been number one every week and every month of every year for the last 12 years. Uh, you don't get to say that about too many people. Um, I look at whether it's Pat McAfee, it's Mike Greenberg, it's Scott Van Pelt, it's Troy Aikman, it's Joe Buck, it's Kirk Herb Street. the list goes on and on. I'm so honored to have the colleagues that I have that I work with at ESPN every day. I look at other people in the business. I got a bunch of friends at FS1. You know what? Michael Irvin's there, Keyshawn Skip, uh, Richard Sherman, Rob Parker, Chris Boussard. The list goes on and on. Even LaShawn McCoy and Emmanuel Acho and, and Joy Taylor with her fabulous self. The list goes on and on and on. But let me tell you something. I'm the one that's been number one. And at the end of the day, it would be nice for one day for this man to stand before everyone and be like, this is not, I'm number one. And this says I'm number one. Now, one would argue that that may have been the case years ago before, because I got my money and then Troy Aikman, I'm sorry, not Troy Aikman, the Tony Romo got his from CBS or whatever the case may be, but I'm not just a talent. I'm a business. I have my own production company. Like you said, I've got my own YouTube channel. I've got my own show. It's not even just a podcast. It's a show with a fully loaded television studio. That's what I built for myself. You know, that can go linear or digital. The list goes on and on. I'm doing all of these things. I'm not doing all of that to be in second place. I'm not doing all of that to look up at somebody else and see that they're making more than me when I'm producing superior ratings and revenue. No, I'm not doing that. And I'm not apologizing for anybody for it. So it's not. Um, I've been treated incredibly well by ESPN. 
I expect to continue to be well treated well by ESPN. Again, I've got great relationships and what have you, but this is a business and Disney has a right to run its business the way it sees fit. ESPN does as well, but if they do, so do I. I hope that we're able to work it out. I'm confident that we will because I'm incredibly happy there, but we'll see. Stephen Smith has been the guy most powerful at ESPN. Let's not forget timeline. He started off banned from ESPN television. Skip Bailey saved his life, saved his career, brings him to television. He basically ones up Steve, Skip Bayless, makes first take what it is. Skip Bayless goes to FS1. While he's there, Stephen A. Smith pulverizes the competition by stealing Shannon Sharp, in my opinion. I know what happened, Stephen A., right? I ain't mad at you. Queens all the way, 1,000%. Shannon Sharp is now on ESPN. But the karma's here. Stephen A. saw Pat McAfee rise up. Pat McAfee rose up through YouTube. Stephen A. is trying to get on YouTube now. It ain't the same. It ain't the same as Pat McAfee. It ain't the same as Shannon Sharp. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. Stephen A. by himself on the microphone. If he ain't trying to be funny, shout out to, to all ball. Yeah. Shannon Sharp can actually hold an interview. He knew with Cat Williams, ah, let me not interrupt him. He's he's going crazy. Stephen A wants to be the show the entire time. He can't, he doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut. No offense. It's a hard thing to do, sp specific skill. This actually reminds me of. When Tiki Barber and Michael Strahan were playing for the Giants, they got into a beef because they were going into a contract negotiation. If I'm not mistaken, Tiki spoke out of turn about Strahan's contract, so they got they had some tension. And after they got past that, Tiki Barber retired, and we won the title without him. Let's go Giants, g all the way. I stopped watching football. Point is, Tiki Barber retires. And he's supposed to go off to this TV stardom that never materialized. Michael Strahan was thought of as the brute defensive end. But towards the end of his career, became this super stud star. Got a haircut. I remember him specifically saying, you know, when you get a haircut right, when the dudes are making fun of it and the girls love it, right? He was, I think I remember him dating like uh Eddie Murphy's ex. It, it made the paper. I don't wanna. But you just see his his celebrity rising. Then all of a sudden, it's time for him to retire. He wins a title for the Giants. Retires. They start comparing him to Frank Gifford, Kathy Lee Gifford's husband, who was a major you know, media guy because he was on Monday Night Football with Howard Cosell. And so because he was a former giant, Strahan gets compared to that. But then all of a sudden, Strahan comes out and he supersedes Tiki Barber, who's supposed to be the, the superstar coming from the New York team. Strahan, clearly, you see to this day, he's on like three different networks. He's on the, he's, uh, his agency is Smack, same thing as Dion, right? Same agency as Dion, they share that. And I say all that to say the same thing is happening with Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith. Not to say Stephen A. Smith didn't see this coming. I'm pretty sure he saw there's another guy here, another alpha. But Shannon Sharp doesn't even go to first take or ESPN every day. Right? He's creating his own platform with, with Chad Johnson. The nightcap and put Gilbert Arenas on there. He's independent and on ESPN. So Shannon Sharp is like, I don't even know who to compare him to. It's like 50 Cent. Well, you got the independent route, you got some commercial, 
but you can you have the independent in a bag because that Cat Williams interview single handedly puts him in a different level. Now here's the key thing: Stephen A. Smith was supposed to be in, was supposed to be in his back pocket is going to Jimmy Kimmel route, having a late night show. Let's make this clear: Stephen A. Smith ain't holding a candle to Shannon Sharp late night. It's arguable who's funnier, but what's not arguable is who could really hold a conversation with another person and enjoying the conversation. Shannon's been doing this for a minute. You could disagree. Tell me what you think. Fabian perspective, expected, so accepted, friendly fire, all ball TV. Out of here, man. All ball suckers, 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 suckers. suckers.